So I heard about soul science versus sports science. So tell me the difference between the two shows. So soul and science is really looking at the tangibles and intangibles of sports. Sports science was just a purely analytical look at athletic performance. But by Trent and I partnering up, there's nobody better in the world to look at that intangible aspect than Trent Dilfer. He understands not only football, but really elite athletes and what makes a difference on that intangible side. There's no one who understands it better than Trent Dilfer. So much of that human element is what comes out in their ability to peak perform. So you might be a great athlete and test a certain way, but maybe there's something holding you back from reaching your peak performance, or maybe you're an average athlete and we can test that, but the moment brings out the best in you. That's the intangible stuff that I'm fascinated about exploring and kind of painting the picture of the athlete, taking in all the data, the scientific data, but also the intangible data and, and trying to explain and celebrate these incredible athletes. Maybe this can help out when they before they do the draft. If they, if the that's, college athletes go through you first, like the little things that respect about coaches or yep. their yep. personalities or style that could affect the game. So we did uh, segments on all the top quarterbacks going into this year's draft for NFL Network. So we struck up another deal with the NFL to do segments for this season as well. You know, our perspective, we're bringing together that analytical science aspect and that intangible aspect. It is something that no one is putting those two things together. And it's an honor, really, to, to partner up with Trent. I got an intangible you guys haven't thought of. Some athletes, sometimes after they win an award, they kind of let off the gas a little oh, bit. Harder to deal with success and failure many times. I've talked about that a lot when I was on television. I know it was true, and I, you know, I, I fell victim to complacency. I never had a problem with adversity. I created a lot of it on my own, but it was the, after success. A lot of times you, you exhale, you get complacent. It's one of the biggest dangers for athletes. So that's something I look very closely at. I think I admire the athletes that stay on top, the LeBron James, the Tom Brady's, the Aaron Rodgers, these guys that every year are consistently the best because there's such a burden that comes with that. It really speaks to their heart. It really speaks to all the stuff inside of them. How come for some athletes, sometimes, uh, or athletes or actors, whether it's not important, the board doesn't seem important until they win it? Well, I don't know if that I don't know if that's necessarily true that it's not important until they win it. I think that that drive to win it um, is always there. That's really the goal of the game. And when they do win it all, the question is, well, along with that comes fame, fortune, money, everything that you always wanted. But then you realize, what do I do with this? That that really becomes the human dilemma. And those athletes who are able to persist, even though they they've already won a championship are the ones to be most admired. My last question, last question uh, for football, for college football. There's only the Heisman. Is there any other trophies? Do you think there should be other levels of guys coming out of college? There, there's other there awards. There's a the, 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 the NCAA has a good job of sharing the, the awards. Like football. You know, there are a lot of other football awards given out. Um, the, Heisman, the Heisman's the one that gets the most attention, but they give the best we secondary have, player. Yeah, but they do a whole award show, okay. so I think they do a, a good job day, with that. Yeah. Thank That's you. Awesome.